dia. It's been played a hundred times, but it continues to scintillate the Rajni Khan fan. He's defied age on the silver screen. Every step he takes. In the Koda Tandi Yavana the Ulla Vandinga Kodala Wurubidu. Every salute. Every action he does on the screen defines the Rajni Khan style. And every Rajni Khan movie revolves around that style and the phenomenal star image. Unique, compelling, and designed to cater to the Rajni that the audience expects. Get ready, folks. One shot. My Rajni Khan, our Rajni Khan walks in and the theater goes thundering with claps. On the one hand, that carefully crafted superstar whose popularity is unparalleled. On the other, the man behind the superstar. 61 years old, no age defying makeup, not even a hair weave to make him look younger. Never an iota of reluctance to show the world what he really looks like. When he walks on stage, it's difficult to find the on screen persona. I'm not exaggerating, banged over my brother's house, there I went there. Nearby, one Rajasthani, one Rajasthani tennis, they have come there. After knowing that I have come, I mean, I was there, he came to see me. Some Rajasthani, his name is Nandulal. He is some 60 plus. He came and he saw, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? I said, 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 मैं अभी एक पिक्चर काम कर रहा हूँ। अच्छा कौन सी पिक्चर? रोबो। अच्छा? हाँ, गुड गुड गुड। Then I told him Aishwarya heroine। Aishwarya heroine। अरे यार काम काम आल कलर की यार मैंने फंटास्टिक। Aishwarya heroine। हाँ, hero को। That candor only adds to the phenomenon, which is a concoction of the real and the real. <laughs> Often two sides with two very different pictures, making it hard to understand what the man wants and what the star does. Did he want to turn from a star to a politician? Did he want to give up stardom for spirituality? Spirituality is something that is like a seed inside. I think he was born with it. Did he identify with the roles he played? Or was the star never in tandem with the man? There is a huge difference between Rajinigan the superstar, Rajinigan the personality, and Rajinigan the human being. I don't think he's changed one bit. The image of a simpleton in real life, but the more complex messages, whether political or spiritual, often came through his films. In 1998, when he made Padayappa opposite Ramya Krishnan, the dialogues in the movie were in the context of a politically charged atmosphere where he had taken on Tamil Nadu Chief Minister J. Jayalalitha. If Rajini enters politics any day he wants, he will sweep the pools. Baba in 2004, when he produced and acted in Baba, which flopped at the box office, it was seen as a statement on whether he should dedicate himself to spirituality or continue the path of stardom. But 
But the reality is that even those closest to him find it difficult to predict Rajini's next move. In his films and in real life, the suspense only adds to the phenomenon. But unpredictability has been the Rajini trait. None could have predicted when his story started that this is where he would be. The journey begins in Karnataka. Born into a Marathi-speaking family as Shivaji Ra Gaikwad in 1950, he was the youngest of four siblings. Lost his mother as a child and struggled through poverty, barely managing to go to school at the Ramakrishna Math. One of his friends in school is Somashundra Dikshit. He's a priest at this temple and we took him down memory lane. He recounted for us what he remembers of Shivaji Rao Gaikwad as a classmate in school. Neither he nor Shivaji Rao Gaikwad would know what the future will unfold. He was a brilliant student and also the class monitor. Whenever we had any doubts, we would ask him. He was also the teacher's favourite. In the meantime, the boy who struggled through his childhood continued his struggle as a teenager and became a bus conductor in Bangalore's Bus Transport Corporation. Raj Bahadur would be with him as a friend and support. In fact, he's the one who may have first discovered Rajnikant, the star. In those days, we would participate in plays. I noticed that Rajni's acting style was unique. So I asked him to go to the Film Institute in Chennai. Back then, Rajnikan didn't know that he was a good actor. After the finishing of uh, two years, uh, the Balchandar uh, came to the Film Institute and, uh, and he has seen one program and he got a, in his mind his Rajnikan style and all that. Even at that time, he don't know even a single word of uh, uh, Tamil and somehow he used to manage and slowly, after two years, he got uh, that this thing, he selected some character, I think, Apurva Ragangal. That film, Abur Varagangal, happened in 1972. The superstar would enter the gates of Tamar cinema in a role that would last all of just a few seconds as the villain opposite Kamal Hassan. The director was the veteran K. Balachandar. I think both of us saw in our eyes that we will get better than the guys around us. And we knew that we were. It was, it's a strange. Uh, cocky attitude. We really didn't know, but we believed. And one spotted the other guy with the same kind of zeal. Truly, both of us did not believe that we'll go this far. Kamal Hassan was the director's protege, but Rajni Kant would begin an unbelievable journey. <laughs> Superstardom was still a few years away and in those years he would play more roles as the villain opposite Kamal Hassan in movies like Padinara Vaidhanile or Endrum Padinara. In the years to come, the two would become two alternate bar centers in Tamar cinema. Popularity would be compared and they would compete at the box office. In the Eventually, Rajni Khan would prove the greatest star and Kamal Hassan, the more versatile actor. We don't even like the kind of films that we do. If you ask him to do a film, he'll refuse a kind of film that I do. As a matter of fact, when he saw Raja Parve, he said, your kind of film, I'll never do it. I said, it's good, but I don't like it. One of the signature Rajnikan styles was established in Ninaitale Inikum, the tossing of the cigarette. The cigarette was the style tool for years to come. In 1978, he acted for the first time as a hero in Bhairavi. The title of superstar was given to him by his fans and it would stick forever. But the real superstar image came after Muratik Kale, directed by S.P. Muthuraman, who gave him the angry young man image in an era where Amita Bachchan played the role in Bollywood. Rajnikant would be the answer in Tamar cinema. The 
reaction hero had established himself. He would try comedy and succeed with the Tamil remake of Golmaal. As far as Rajini is concerned, I think of late for the past 10 years, I don't think he needs any comedy at all with him because he has followed the Amitabh Bachchan pattern and his comedy scenes itself are uh, rip roaring in the movie. His style would be repetitive at times, but it became the Rajini trademark. The energy sent the fans into a dizzy. He would speak fast and difficult to understand. English is the fashion of the nation. In such condition and consideration, the conjunction becomes injunction and injunction becomes irritation. But even that would be passed off as the Rajni Khan trademark. Till it reached a stage where for his fans, there was nothing Rajni can't do. But did success change the man behind the superstar? How you take uh, a shift from something down there to translating it right up to, to this level, one has to be blessed with a great amount of wisdom, clarity, integrity and I think a lot of personality matters. And in this particular issue, I think uh, spirituality was the biggest balance. Coming up after a very short break, did success change the superstar and can anyone predict the road ahead? They said Rajinikanth is finished, Rajinikanth is over. But no, not Rajinikanth. He's a phoenix here. He can never write more. Ooh. Alcohol and cigarettes were often associated with him in the early days, but the action hero would send his first major spiritual message with the film Guru Shri Raghavendra. It was his hundredth film and was dedicated to the ancient Guru who Rajnikant worships. So how does the image of the angry young man known for smoking and drinking match with the image of a spiritual star? He dresses completely with suitor or uh, you know, the, the, he stresses up very well and he sits down in front of the mirror and he acts himself. You know, he is, and that's how he sees. And when he goes out, he takes out his clothes and wears on very simple clothes and goes. That's the man he is. The image would remain a hard sell and in the 1990s, a series of super hits like Bacha, Anna Malai, Maleda, Anna Malai, Arunachalam, Andava Solra, Arunachalam Mudikra. So later. And finally, Padayappa in 1998 took his box office collections to astronomical amounts. Hey, who are you, man? It would seem his star power was unshakable. And that's when the traditional Tamil Nadu star question began getting stronger. In Tamil Nadu, superstardom meant an automatic entry into politics. MGR had done it, Shivaji Ganeshan tried, J. Jayalalitha had made it and Karunanidhi too had a connect to the film world. In 1996, when Rajnikanth opposed Jayalalitha and later supported breakaway Congress leader G.K. Mupanar, many thought this was it. There were no movies made between 1998 and 2002, but neither did a political script unfold. Because everyone feels that if he enters politics, it will be his election. If he contests an election, it will be his election. That is why people think that why would a man give up such an opportunity? He, he can become the chief minister of the state if he wants. Uh, will he give that up? That is the kind of question which people ask themselves. And thinking that he is like other men, they say, well, he will not give it up, so he will enter politics. No, he is very spiritually minded. In that brief period, Rajni Khan would often be tormented by his origins. Born as a Marathi in Karnataka and loved by Tamil Nadu as a star, that interstate journey would become a delicate issue in 2001 when linguistic chauvinism played in a political battle between Karnataka and Tamil Nadu over the Kaveri River water. Rajni Khan was caught in the midst of political jingoism. The Tamil film industry went on a bitter protest against Karnataka. Rajni Khan wouldn't take part and was accused of betraying Tamil Nadu. He would be asked time and again to state if he was a Kannadiga 
or a Tamilian first? A painful question to a man loved in both states. Both Tamilians and Kannadigans watch my films. I don't think it's good to question my patriotism. If this kind of talk continues, it will end up affecting everyone. He's a person who is very nationalistic, deeply concerned about every issue that happens in the country. He's a wonderful leader as such, I know that, and he's got leadership material. But he always waits for that one call which he has to take. After the emotions died out, silence and spiritual retreat took him out of the linguistic clash. In 2002, he returned to the screens with a spiritual message. Baba was a very different film from the ones he had made, but it failed at the box office. Rajni Khan produced Baba and took the unprecedented step of returning money to distributors after the film's failure. It was an effort to ensure that the Rajni guarantee was more important than a temporary loss and cannot make him unbankable at the box office. Second, third week he called us. How much you got, bought it? So we bought it for this. How much you think you lose? I may lose this much, he says. I may lose. But even though he had not lost, he may not even lose. It was only in the second week he calls up. Because there's still the film may run for another two weeks. He did say, if you're going to lose this much, take it, he said. He just gave it back. Come on, come on, come on. The box office guarantee was important because a Rajni movie was always big budget. The star's remuneration itself is estimated to be anywhere upwards of 20 crores. In fact, at one time, he would take the distribution rights for his films in key centers and is arguably the most expensive and bankable star in India. Come on, come on. But despite the goodwill from returning money, Baba had dented the Rajni image. Many wondered if the aging superstar could ever recover. At that point of time, they wrote him off. I distinctly remember they said Rajni Gandhi is finished, Rajni Gandhi is over. But no, not Rajni Gandhi. He's a phoenix here. You can never write him off. Chandramukhi, the Tamil remake of Malayalam original Manichitra Tare, brought him back in business in 2005. I like it. Then it would be Shivaji in 2007 and Robo in 2010 with director Shankar. The box office collections would make Bollywood and the rest of India sit up and take notice. But though the numbers were fascinating, Rajni Khan would never perhaps be seen as a Bollywood buster. His ability to speak the language uh, kindly told, uh, clearly told the public that he is a South Indian. You know, that he is South Indian. So it was difficult for him to play roles where he was required to play a North Indian. <laughs> Tiger hat, tiger. He tried registering a presence in the north with Hindi films, but those efforts didn't pay off, and Rajnikanth would have to be content with being called the Amitabh Bachchan of the south. The two would, in fact, come together on the national screen with Hum. He may remain a southern phenomenon, but he'll always be the superstar. None in the north, west or east of Indian cinema can have the box office power that Rajni Kant does. The superstar guarantee remains, but it will be tested with every film he makes.